Something had to give this week. Something. So if you're around, let me know you can hear me. Because now that I have the video up, maybe the audio. I didn't check the audio. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a month. Okay. We're going to try this again so that I can really show you what we're doing. All right. Now that I have all the cameras. All right. Let's see. Oops. First things first. What I did is I took page 30 and 31, which shows you one half of the wing. And I actually, it's it, there. This is how I've uh, I've used these two pages from the pattern regularly because the pattern do, isn't really good as far as telling you what fabrics to use. So I went through and counted each of the background half square triangles with these bright ones. Now the only thing I have to tell you is, and you got to be aware of this, is. If you've got two, you actually need to make four. Because remember, this is only half of the wing. See? We've got to make double this to the other side, with the exception of this part. Yeah. So, let's see. Whoops. Sorry. Don't mean to make you crazy. So here we've got two of this combination. That means we need four of them. And every time, every time I cut the fabric for the squares, I checked them off. So I just copied this out of the pattern book so that I would know exactly what I needed cut. We are going to be making 136 half square triangles. Now, as I showed you in the, as I posted in the group page, if, let's say you needed to make half square triangles, not for this quilt specifically, but for another one. My favorite method is the eight at once. And I'll show you what that is. Let's see. This is the method, and you can find this anywhere if you do a search. Basically, you decide what size half square triangle you need, and you're going to cut a bigger square of both of your fabrics. Lay them right sides together. Draw an X through the back of your, one of your fabrics. And then you're going to sew a quarter of an inch line on each side of the X of those lines. When you cut them along the X and then in the plus, you will end up with eight half square triangles. Now, yes, it's my favorite way of doing it, but it doesn't always lend itself for every pattern like this one, because we only need four. But we're going to do it so that you can see we're going to make the half square triangles for this specific quilt so you can see what I'm doing. All right. Right side. Oop, wrong one. <laughs> right sides together. I have my line that I drew. And I am using a quarter inch foot with a guide. So all I'm going to do is put my guide part on my line. And I am going to chain piece these. What that means is I'm going to stitch on one side and put my next one through. We need four of each one of our color combinations. So if we do two sets of these half square triangles, you'll have four half square triangles. And I just turned it around. 
and I'm going to stitch it on the other side of the line. Pull it out a little bit. Cut my thread, cut the thread that I put between them, and then you're going to cut on that line. Whoops. So that you have your half square triangle. This is our background fabric, and we're going to make a ton of different colors on the other side. Okay. Now, the pattern wants you to sew, uh, iron these seams open. I personally am not doing that because it's not a really good strong seam. And I've found that if I iron them over to one side, which is the colored side, I'm not going to iron my seams towards the background because it's too much of a pastel and it will be noticeable. But if I iron them over, it's a stronger seam. And I will be able to, hoping when I put this quilt together, use that offset seam to sew them together and align my seam. So if you want to iron them open, by all means, that's what the pattern says, go ahead. I personally am not. In order to do this, I'm laying my colored fabric on top. I'm going to set my seam. So that when I iron it over, you won't see, the seam won't be a shadow behind the fabric. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to go to trim it up because we have to trim them up. This is my favorite trimmer. I mean, I have, this is the trimmer. Uh, the Tucker Trimmer, and I have the Tucker Trimmer 3 also. So we've got half-inch marks on one side, whole number marks on the other side. The Tucker Trimmer 3 is the same thing. The only difference is it's a little bit larger. So depending on whatever size it tells you to stitch, to cut them up or square them to, that's the diagonal line that we're putting here. And we're going to do both sides. And then I'm going to turn it around. I have a tendency to do it in the same order each time, meaning the same color. I'm keeping the background fabric for last. See, I put that line back on. You can see our square outline here for the size block. And there you go. The only thing is, I think I did a little, I'll do it again. It has been a crazy week. I don't want any more of these crazy weeks. I'm done. I've had enough. I'm raising the white flag and surrendering. Okay, so again, one more time. One side, then the other side. I'm using my seam line right in the diagonal here. Then I'm going to line up seam line and the dotted line around the square. There you go. Another half square triangle to add to my pile. So I'm pretty close to done. I only have... I have no idea. Maybe I don't know, 20 left out of the 136 that we have to do. Now, next week. Next week, we're going to do flying geese. We got a lot of flying geese. So we're going to go through page from 9 through 12. And we're going to do all of the flying geese. I'm going to show you there's basically a few different options. And then we're going to skip a week and come back 
second week in December ish, somewhere along the line. So now there's two options in the um, pattern a single color version, which is this black and white, and the multicolored version. Now, the multicolored version, we're using, I'm using all the squares. If you had the kit, you have these little squares. I'm not going to tell you how big they are, but you know what they are if you have them in the kit. So we're going to be doing, I'm going to be doing this version. I'm going to show you next week how to do my version and how to do the single colorway using the Studio 180 wing clipper, where we actually do four flying geese at one time. Kind of, kind of like the eight and one half square triangles, but unfortunately that way will not work for the multicolored because we don't need that many in half square triangle. I mean in flying geese for each individual color. So we are going to go through all of the options of flying geese. I'm so glad I got the video working again. I can't imagine you know, I take it for granted that I have three cameras, so it makes it so much easier for me to do videos for you and having one laptop camera. No, thank you. I don't like it. So this is the version that I will put up on the YouTube channel because the previous version, I couldn't get the videos to work. So I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving, everybody, and I will see you the Sunday after Thanksgiving for our flying geese. And hopefully next week my life won't be so crazy. See you later. Have a great day, everybody, and have a wonderful weekend. I'm here if you need me. You know where I am.